Hello and welcome to the second and last part of this series for the top 40 power platform interview questions with the answer. In this video, we are going to see the another 20 power platform interview questions which can be asked during your interview. Let's get started. So the first question will be like examine the idea of security roles in Power App. So the answer is in Power Apps, security roles can be used to retreat access to certain apps and data in the environment or they can be used to restrict access to all resources in the environment. The next question is what do DLP policies refer to in Power App? So to protect any sensitive information within your company, we can utilize Power Apps to establish and implement the data loss prevention policies. This data loss prevention policy will limit which consumer connectors can access specific business data. These policies guarantee consistent control of data across your organization and prohibit critical company information from being unintentionally shared with platforms like social media. <coughs> The data loss prevention or DLP policies can be created and supervised at either the tenant or environment level through the Power Platform and Win Center. How does the combo box in Power App differ from the drop down control? So, the answer to this question is the Power Apps commonly employs two controls, namely combo box and drop downs, to provide users with the list of options. So, the user can select one of them from there. A combo box is a control that enables users to select from a range of options with support for searching and making multiple selections. While on the other hand, a drop down control display only the first item until the user expands it to reveal the full list of options and select it. <coughs> Question number 24 Explain the functionality of save data, load data, and clear data functions in Power App. The save data function is used to save a data collection under a given name for later use. The syntax for that is something like this. As I can show you, save data collection name. The data function, it reloads a previously saved collection by name. So whatever name we provide for our collection, we can load that data using that collection name. This function cannot be used to load a collection from a different source. So it cannot be used to load any data from the different source than the original. A syntax for that is load data, the collection, its name and ignore non-existing files. So if any files are not exist, we can pass to ignore that. The third option is clear data function. This function clears all storage associated with the program if no name is specified. So if you if you don't provide any type of name to this function, it will clear out all the storages, all the storage associated with the program. Question number 25. How do the is match, match, and match all functions in Power App differ from each other? The function is match evaluates a text string against a pattern, which could be a user-defined string, a regular expression, or a predefined pattern. Where is the match and match all function retrieves the matching content, including any sub matches. So this is the, this is the main word you can say like sub matches for the match and each match all function. What is the difference between lookup and filter function? The lookup function is designed to locate the initial matching element in a table based on given formula. It can be utilized to find solitary records that fulfill certain criteria. On the other hand, the filter function is utilized to identify records within a table that satisfies specific formula criteria. Question number 27. What is Power Apps delegation? The delegation is the point at which the expressiveness of Power Apps formulas reaches the need to limit network data transfer. In short, rather than transmitting data to the app for local processing, Power Apps will outsource data processing to the data source. It means to the server. 
working with huge data sets necessitates the use of delicate functions and formulas it's the only way to keep your app running smoothly and guarantee users have the access to all the information they require question number 28 what is the purpose of the loading spinner in power apps so a loading spinner is an animated element that is an animated element that displays the loading is in progress the loading spinner appears when the data is slowly loaded this means that it aids in information to the user that the process is in busy mode and that it may take some time for something to materialize it is also known as the spinner loader progress indicator spinner loader progress indicator similarly in power apps if data is loading slow in the app and you want to place a spinner to reduce the wait time this is referred as power apps loading spinner microsoft included a loading spinner option in the advanced tab as well as the drop down menu in the upper left corner of the app explain the distinct function of power apps the distinct function eliminates duplicate values from a one column table by applying formula to each entry it is only available for the one column table the name of the column is the result of the formula which can access the fields of the current record for example here is the syntax for that like distinct the table name and formula on which we want to make it distinct or to remove the duplicates here, the table refers to the table being evaluated while formula is the expression used to evaluate each record. So it will go and traverse each record and apply the formula and then make it distinct. Question number 30, what are Power Apps templates? So the Power App templates are quick and straightforward method to create apps that link to various data sources. You can go and log into the powerapps.com to access the pre-built templates. However, there are some advantages to using templates. You can use or clone pre-built layouts and color palettes for different app screens. Learn how to configure controls for common actions such as submitting data from a form by clicking a button, switching from one app page to the next, presenting a list of items from my data and so on. Here we can learn how data enters and exits your app as well as how to connect it to the, your data source. Also, we can learn how to integrate a GPS into your app by using this template because this template has all of these pre-built templates which has this type of functionalities available in that. What are the differences you see between Power Apps workflows and Power Apps pages? All users can see the page. That is first thing. A workflow is solely visible to the user who developed it unless it has been shared with others. A power app page can be viewed inside the power apps. However, a power app workflow action cannot be viewed inside the power apps. It is not viewable inside the power app, the power, power apps workflows. What exactly is the difference between power apps and power automate? So the power app is a declarative environment that uses connectors to enable content access through a customizable user experience while Power Automate is a workflow engine that uses the same connectors as Power BI to provide automatic content access. What exactly is delay output in Power Apps? So when this delay output is set to true, there is a second delay, a second delay before the changes are recognized. This is done to give you time to complete typing what you want. When used to add text input, the delay works well. What would you do if a GPF was found in your application? So, we will examine the library search direction for implement required DLLs, runtime PBLs, and many other things. If PFC is used, make sure the PB version is the same as the PFC version, 5.0.04 and so on. Use a DLL tracking application to test the executable's DLLs list. Enable PB debug tracing statistics and find the last lines of code performed prior to the GPF. This one is tricky actually. Question number 35. Can the Canvas app be utilized within a model driven app? Yes, the Canvas app can be added to the model driven forms in the same way that other custom controls can. Rich data integration capabilities in an embedded Canvas app integrates contextual data from the host model driven form into the embedded Canvas app. 
So the answer to this question is yes, we can do that. Question number 36, in a collaborative settings with frequent updates, what steps can be taken to maintain version control of Canvas app? So whenever we are saving our app, it is possible to include a version specific comment or note. And you can also add a label to the app's home screen to indicate the version number which can be manually updated by the app's creator every time he, they are publishing the app. What are two different types of Power Apps authentication? There are two types of authentication methods available in Power Apps. One is called as OAuth based authentication and second one is password based authentication. The OAuth based authentication eliminates the need for users to remember their Power App password for Office or Office 365 account credentials as it is authenticated the app requesting access to the Power App service and Power App handles all the authentication and authorization. The second approach is password-based authentication. This password-based authentication supports both username and password-based authentication and the past Power Apps developer can choose which type of use, of power, power, use for Power Apps forms which can be configured using Power Apps attributes such as form security type. So basically two type of Authentications are available. OAuth based authentication where user don't have to remember the username and password, and another one is password based authentication where he has to remember the username and password to be entered. What are the limitations of Power, power Apps? So, till now, what we have discussed is about advantages and capabilities of Power App. Now, we are going to discuss about the limitations of Power App. Despite their extensive capabilities, Power Apps comes with certain limitations that business needs to consider. First is licensing is limited to Microsoft 365. Only the users or only the company which is having the Microsoft 365 license can use Power Apps. The licensing structure is complex. Low code services are utilized. The integrated development environment of Power App is intricated. There is limited support available for various device sizes and screen orientation. There are a lot of not lot of screen sizes or screen orientations are supported in Power Apps. There are limited number of them. The throughput limits of the connector ecosystem. There is a throughput limit for each of the connector systems or the connectors. There is no shared code or functions available. There is no sharing of code is available. What are the different types of connectors available in Power Apps? Okay, so there are mainly three types of connectors we have in Power App standard connectors, custom connectors, and premium connectors. So the standard connector is something which are built in connectors that allow user to connect to various data sources such as SharePoint, SQL Server, and Salesforce, etc. The custom connectors. These connectors are created by users and allow them to connect to custom APIs or web service. And the premium connectors are connectors that require a separate license and offer additional features and functionality other than what Power App provides. Question number 40 What is a flow in Power Apps? With Power Apps flow, you can react to any occurrence in a particular service, for example, SharePoint, online, or any anywhere else. And according to that particular action, we can subsequently manipulate the information in different services like Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, anywhere using that flow. So that is called as flow in Power Apps. Okay. So yeah, that is an end of our second part of this Power Apps interview questions series. I hope you like the video. And if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please like comment and subscribe on the video and press the bell icon to receive the notification whenever I am uploading a new video. Thank you so much for watching the video. See you in next one. Bye.